A lot of times, during the hiring process, candidate might be presented with employment assessment test. Typically, assessment test is specific to the job you're applying for. And a lot of times, employer is hiring external test provider to conduct the test. Most often, employment assessment test is just a computer-based quiz with the questions and answers. But sometimes, you may get questions similar to the ones you see on the test during the interview process as well. Employment assessment test typically measures how successful candidate is going to be on the job. Typically, employment assessment test consists of different question types and a lot of times includes analytical and problem-solving questions, questions that ask you to solve specific business problem, data interpretation and analysis questions, patterns questions, charts and graphs questions, math and calculation questions, logical reasoning questions, and a lot of other types of questions. This is the main reason why we put together this video with the sample questions and answers we see on employment assessment test. Let's go ahead and get started to get you ready for the test. Let's look at the simple question which tests your knowledge of logical reasoning and patterns. Bob is using a new set of golf clubs. With an 8 iron club, the ball travels an average distance of 100 yards. With a 7 iron, 108 yards. With a 6 iron club, 114 yards. How far will the ball go if Bob uses a 5 iron club? And you have 4 choices. 120 yards, 119, 118, or 117. Do you think you know the correct answer? Let's see if we can nail this question and get to the correct answer together. When you read through the question carefully, you see the pattern here. For every iron reduced, the ball travels for longer distance. For example, 8 iron club is 100 yards, 7 is 108, and then 6 iron is 108 plus 6, which is 114. So the first increment was by 8, and the second increment was by 6, which is 8 minus 2. So we can reasonably conclude that with each club with a lower number, the ball travels farther by the distance between the number of the previous two clubs minus 2 yards. So the next value would be 114 minus 108, which is 6, minus 2, which is 4 yards, and 114 plus 4 is equals 118. So the correct answer is C, 118 yards. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the tricky question frequently asked on the test, which tests your knowledge of money management and fractions. What fraction of the initial amount was left in N's account after paying one-sixth of the rent, then two-fifths of the remainder to the credit card company and $450 for the new TV? The initial amount in her bank account was $2,400. And you presented with four choices. 29th to 40th, 11 15th, 7 48th, 5 16th, and 1 4th. Do you think you know the answer or do you know how to calculate it? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. Calculations involved need to be done in multiple steps. In step 1, we need to calculate the amount and paid for the rent, which is calculated as original amount $2,400 multiplied by one-sixth and is an equivalent of $400. In step two, we need to calculate the balance after N actually paid for the rent. We will calculate it by subtracting $400 from $2,400 and the amount left would be $2,000. In the next step, we need to calculate the amount paid to the credit card, which is calculated as $2,000 multiplied by two-fifths and is an equivalent of $800. After both rent and credit card payment have been made, the amount left in the bank is $1,200, which is calculated as $2,000 minus $800. And the last purchase Anne made is a TV and she paid for it $450. The amount left in the bank after Anne paid for TV is $750. To calculate the fraction after Anne made all the payments, we need to divide $750 by $2,400.
Then we divide both amounts in the fraction by 10, getting to 75th, 240. Then we divide it by 3, getting down to 25th, 80th. And then we optimize it down to 5 16th by dividing both components by 5. So the correct answer is D, 5 16th. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the very tricky question, which is often used as part of advanced tests. There are three times as many black marbles in the bag as red marbles, with the 100 total. What would be the probability of taking black marble out of the bag and then choosing another black marble if the number of red marbles was doubled? And you have five different choices. 203, 3 one 111, 310, 37, 62, 925th or 35th? Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct solution together. Let's first calculate the original number of marbles. We have 100 total marbles, and one fourth of them is red, and three fourths of them is black, because there are three times as many blacks as there are red marbles. One fourth of 100 is 25, and three fourths of 100 is 75. And after we double red marbles, we will get 50 red marbles and 75 black marbles, with the total number of marbles would be 125. Let's calculate the probability of taking out a black marble for the first time. We do it by dividing 75 to 125. And after simplifying the fraction, we get to the value of 3 fifths, as well as for the fact that there is a fewer total number of marbles left in the bag. Based on the calculations that we do in the next step, we get to the value of 74 black marbles left in the bag out of 124 total marbles. To calculate the value of probability of taking out a black marble for the second time, we need to multiply the first probability of 3 fifth by the probability of taking black marble for the second time, which would be an equivalent of the fraction 74 divided by 124. After we complete the initial calculations, we get to the value of 222 620th. After simplifying this value, we get to the final probability of 111 310th. So the correct choice here is choice B, 111 310th. Hopefully you've nailed this question. A lot of people are interested in asking me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help is by sharing the latest questions you see on the interview and assessment test. Please share the questions you've encountered as part of the test in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. A lot of times number sequences are used to test candidates' abilities on the test. We are looking at one of these types of questions. Which number logically follows this number series? And we have a series of numbers. 4, 6, 9, 6, 14, 6. And we need to determine the next number. We have four choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 17. Choice C, 19. And choice D, 21. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. The best way to answer these types of questions on the test is to determine the pattern. You see that there are two patterns. One is pattern of number 6, which is in between of every other number. So we have 4, 6, 9, 6 again, 14, 6 again. And once we determine this pattern, we see that the pattern of numbers in between 6s is increasing by 5. So we have 4 increasing by 5, which leads to 9, 9 increasing by 5, which leads to 14. So to determine the next number in the pattern, we need to increase 14 by 5, which would be 19. So the correct choice here is C. Let's recap. The numbers in between 6s increase by 5, while the 6s remain constant. The correct answer is choice C, which is 19. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the simple, easy to understand, but at the same time very tricky question you might frequently see as part of employment assessment test. What is the sum of all numbers from 1 to 100? And you have four different choices. 
Choice A, 2,050. Choice B, 3,050. Choice C, 4,050. And choice D, 5,050. Obviously, you can use a calculator if it is allowed on the test and get to the correct answer, but you might run out of time. There is a better solution. Let's go and take a look how we can solve this challenge together. You will get to the correct solution much faster if you realize that there are 50 pairs of numbers. And the sum of the first and the last number of each pair would be an equivalent of 101. For example, the sum of the first number, which is 1, or the last number in the pattern, which is 100, is 101. But the same is true for all other pairs. 2 plus 99 is an equivalent of 101. Same is true for 3 plus 98, 4 plus 97, and etc. When you continue this logic, you realize that there are 50 pairs, and sum of values in each pair is 101. So the correct answer is 5050. Hope you've learned how to solve these types of challenges as part of employment assessment test. But if you're looking to get more questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Let's look at the tricky problem you might frequently see on the test. The father of three kids is 41 years old. His oldest son is 13, the middle son is 10, and the youngest son is 6 years old. In how many years the age of the father would be the same as the sum of his kids' ages? And you have four choices in 5 years, in 6 years, in 9 years, or in 12 years. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct answer together. One of the easiest ways to solve this problem in the test might be to add 3 ages for the kids, incremented by 3 for every year, and increment father's age by 1, and see at which point are you going to have a match. An alternative way to do it would be to do the calculations using the formula. So let's calculate the sum of all three kids' ages first. 13 plus 10 plus 6 is equal 29. The difference in the father's age and the kids' ages sum is 41 minus 29 equals 12. Every year, the kids' age would increase by 3, while father's age will increase by 1. So the difference is 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 is the value by which sum of three kids' ages will be catching up to the father's age. So to calculate the actual question asked in the problem, we need to divide 12 by 2, which is an equivalent of 6 years. So the correct choice here is choice B. In 6 years, the age of the father would be an exact sum of his kids' ages. So the father will be 47 at that time. Can you guess what would be the ages of the kids at that time? Hopefully this explanation was helpful and now you know how to solve these types of problems on the test. People contact me and ask what's changed during COVID-19. Let's look at the changes in employment assessment test process that have happened recently. One of the biggest changes is the fact that a lot of people work remotely, which means a lot of hiring also happening remotely. Provider might ask you to install special software to monitor your desktop activities. They might also ask you to enable your camera to see what you're doing during the test. Another big shift we see is that the questions become more relevant to the position. For example, if you're applying for accountant or bookkeeper job, make sure you know how to import the data, do profit and loss reports, calculate the expenses, and calculate the annual statements. These are the types of questions that you might see for that specific position. Researching the company and researching the test provider always works for our students. Once you know who the provider is, you can try to go to their website to see the sample questions to get an idea what kind of questions you're going to get on the test. It is always a good idea to refresh your hands-on skills and practice before the test. This gives you necessary boost of confidence and allows to pass the test with the higher grade. If you didn't pass the test, make sure to reflect after it. Take notes and develop an action plan to see what the next steps might be to get you the job. Now let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of working with shapes, patterns and numbers. Select an arrow which logically belongs in the rectangle with the question mark. Here on the screen you see 3x3 box. Each row of the box 
in each column of the box has arrows. One arrow is missing. Which arrow do you think is missing? The key here is to identify the pattern. Each row in each column contains unique arrows. In the first row, we have arrow pointing to the right, upper right, and then to the upper left. Then upper left, right, and upper right. So here we have upper right, and then we have arrow pointing to the upper left, and what's missing is the arrow pointing to the right. And that would be the right answer. And the arrow pointing to the right would be choice A. And this is the explanation. So each row has three arrows. All three arrows are directed to three directions, and they are unique. According to the pattern, correct answer is A, because arrow which is directed to the right is missing in the third row. Hopefully you've got this one right. Now let's look at the very complex question, which you see a lot during logical reasoning tests, psychometric tests, and the numerical reasoning tests. Find the correct shape to continue the series. And what we have here, we have three by three matrix with uh, eight shapes populated and one shape is missing. There are four choices as usual, but in order to, for you to calculate the right shape, you need to determine the pattern. And in fact, there are two patterns here on this screen. Can you figure it out? Do you know what the right answer is? As I mentioned, there are two patterns here. One is there is a pattern for the shape. Which shape would you choose? And second pattern is the pattern for the lines. And where is the right location for the line itself? Now let's go through the detection of the shape pattern first. So the shape pattern is triangle, square, and then the circle. Right? So triangle, square, and the next one would be the circle. So we have a circle that's uh, the right value here, but all of this are the circles. So this was helpful, but not by much. But it just tells us that we are detecting the first pattern. And here, if you want to confirm, we have square, circle, and then triangle. Now, the most important part here is to determine on which side of the shape the lines should be located. And what we have here, we have four locations, as you can see in the answer. One location on the top, right, left, and bottom. So how would you know where's the right location for the circle shape? So let's look closely here and let's detect the pattern here for the line location. The line location starts with the bottom, right, and then top. So you see it's going counterclockwise. So if, if you imagine the clock with the clockwise uh, rotation, then this would be counterclockwise. And let's see if we are correct and we have a pattern here. So we have bottom, right, top, then we have left, bottom, so that still matches the counterclockwise pattern. And then we have left, bottom, right. So I think the missing shape here would be the one before the left, which would be on the top. So the right answer in this case would be A, because here we have a circle which matches the circle's pattern, and then we have lines located at the top. Let's verify to confirm that. And as you can see, the correct answer is A. So let's recap. There are two patterns you need to detect in this assignment. Patterns for the shapes and pattern for the line location. Shapes are displayed in the particular order. Triangle, square, circle, that's really the pattern for the shapes. And pattern for lines are in a counterclockwise order. So correct answer is A. Hopefully you've got this one right. You will see a lot of these types of questions in the assessment test. Here is the question from the real test to help you test your knowledge. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video. A student sets her budget for groceries at X dollars. If for each of the N days she uses Z worth of groceries, which of the following expressions represents the amount left in the budget? Choice A, X minus N. Choice B, X minus Z. Choice C, N X minus Z. And choice D, X minus N Z. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video and myself or other experts on the channel will reply with the correct answer in the comments as well. Thanks for participating and good luck testing your knowledge. Let's look at the very interesting but at the same time tricky and captivating question that you might frequently see as part of employment assessment test. How many two-digit numbers between 1 and 100 with both digits even? And you have four choices, 50, 48, 25 and 20. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. You can solve this challenge in two different ways. The first way is probably the easiest 
is to go through all the numbers between 1 and 100 and only get the ones that match the criteria. Because we're only looking for two-digit numbers, only numbers that start with 2, 4, 6, or 8 will match the criteria. Then you look at the second digit, which could be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So in the 20s, you will have numbers 20, 22, 24, 26, or 28. Five numbers. Very similar set of numbers in the 40s. And very similar in the 60s and 80s as well. Another way to solve this challenge would be through math, which would be more helpful, especially if you're dealing with the larger numbers that could be hard to put into this grid on a timely basis. To do it using the math principles, we need to calculate the possibilities for the first numbers, which could be 2, 4, 6, or 8. And the total count of possibilities is 4. The second number values could be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 and there are five possibilities for the second number. So the total number of possibilities would be a result of multiplication of 4 by 5, which would be an equivalent of 20. So the correct choice is D. Hopefully you understand this question, and will know how to solve it if you get similar question as part of employment assessment test. A lot of students ask me, what are the smartest ways to learn? Let's look at the different options available to you. Let me share with you some ways to learn new material that work for me. I typically use dedicated, uninterrupted chunks of time to read and practice new material. When my attention drifts, I try to take a break, and I typically do it every 25 to 30 minutes. I recommend that you download workbooks to practice the hands-on steps, which helps you reinforce the steps and better learn the material. When I try to learn something, I try to watch videos from start to finish in one sitting. I use different playback speed to make sure the material keeps me engaged. I also try to give myself time to absorb the content. And if something is not clear, I try to pause the video, and sometimes I even go back to review material more than once. Let's look at the tricky question, which is often used to test your knowledge of finding synonyms and understanding analogy in terms of the words. Which word can logically replace the question mark? Water is to a pipe as something to a wire. And you have five choices. Electricity, voltage, current, heat, or cord. Do you think you know the answer? In logical terms, this question asks you to explain the things in terms of another and to highlight the ways in which they are alike. Water is to a pipe as an electricity to a wire. So the correct answer here is choice A. If you look at choices B to E, you see that they're incorrect choices because they do not provide such an explanation. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's talk about best practices on how to get ready for employment assessment test. If this option is available and you have a choice, try to schedule assessment test in the morning when you have highest levels of energy. Get a good night's sleep before the test. And please do not take the test if you're tired, since a lot of questions require your top mental energy performance. During the test, read each question carefully, ideally more than once. Questions are designed to be tricky, and each and every detail in the question might be important. If you have a choice, try to answer easy questions first. This would allow you to leave harder questions for the end, but you will get easy answers in and you will get the points for them. Try to validate your answers with more than one method. For example, if you are doing an Excel assessment test, you can do manual calculation, you can try to use formulas for calculations, use calculator, or use pivot tables to validate your answers. And last but not least, try not to guess the answers, as some providers deduct points for incorrect selections. A lot of times you might get a question in the test which validates your knowledge of logical reasoning. We're looking at a sample of this type of question. Which conclusion follows from the statements below with an absolute certainty. None of the stamp collectors are engineers, that's statement one, and statement two, all the runners are stamp collectors. And there are four possible choices. All stamp collectors are engineers. No stamp collectors are runners. Some runners are engineers. And engineers are not runners. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. 
there are three groups of people referenced in the statements – runners, stamp collectors, and engineers. The best way to answer this question is to draw a circle for each one of the logical groups. The first statement in the question – none of the stamp collectors are engineers, which puts stamp collector circle outside of the engineer circle. Second statement is – all runners are stamp collectors, which allows us to put runner circle inside of the stamp collector circle. After we have the visual representation of each group in the diagram like we have here in the slide, we can analyze possible choices and the answers. And once we go through the analysis, we can exclude incorrect choices. Choices A, B, and C are not correct. Let's recap. The best way to answer these types of questions is to draw a simple diagram. Once you draw the diagram, you exclude incorrect answer and find the correct answer. The correct answer for this question is D. Engineers are not runners. Here is the question from the real test to help you test your knowledge. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video. A student can rent a violin from a music store for $15 a month for the first three months and then $10 a month for each of the following months. How much would he pay for rent? if he needs a violin for nine months. Choice A, $90. Choice B, $105. Choice C, $120. And choice D, $135. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. And myself or other experts on the channel will reply with the correct answer in comments as well. Thanks for participating and good luck testing your knowledge. I'm sorry for the interruption, but I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new questions regularly as part of online training for everyone YouTube channel community tab. I give you opportunity to try and answer this question yourself. We post answers and explanations to the question in the comments next day. Please make sure to check it out and test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let me share you smart ways to get prepared for the test. One of the smartest ways to prepare is to find out who your provider is that will be conducting an assessment test and use outlines and simple questions from the provider. The providers might be Indeed.com, SkillCheck, IKM, Kinexa, SHL, and a lot of others. Once you know who the provider is, you can go to their website, find out sample questions, and practice with sample questions. You can also practice LinkedIn assessment test questions on the topic that you will be assessed. LinkedIn test is free, it gives you exposure to the sample questions, and also you can get a badge that will enhance your profile for potential employers. You can also research the topic you're trying to prepare for online and download ebooks to get ready for the test. Hands on experience is very important. You can find relevant training and follow along to do hands-on exercises using practice videos on the training. If you have a question or ran into an obstacle during your practice exercises, try posting questions in the comment sections of the video. Channel owners or members of the channel monitor the questions and respond to the inquiries. And last but not least, consider subscribing to relevant YouTube channels. I encourage you to consider subscribing to online training for everyone. We have a great community of people helping each other to prepare and pass the test. A lot of times you might get a question on the test which validates your knowledge of meanings of English words. We are looking at the sample of this type of question. Which answer expresses the meaning of the word reassuring best? And we have four choices – compassionate, comforting, explanatory, and meddlesome. Do you think you know the answer? To answer this question, it helps to understand the meaning of the word reassure. And reassure typically means removing doubts or fears for someone. Considering this, reassuring does not mean showing compassion, explaining something, meddling in his or her affairs. So the correct answer to this question is choice B, comforting. Let's recap. To answer this question correctly, you need to understand the meaning of the source word. And in the second step, exclude words that do not match the meaning of the source word. The correct answer here is choice B, comforting, which is very similar to meaning of the word reassure. Hopefully you've nailed this question. 
And if you're looking for more practice exercises with similar questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description of this video. And now, here is the question for you to try. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video. First and second bookshelves together have 50 books. First and third bookshelves together have 40 books. Second and third bookshelves together have 30 books. How many books are in there on each shelf? And you have four choices of different sets. Choice A, 20, 30, and 10 for the first, second, and third. Choice B, 25, 25, and 15. Choice C, 30, 20, and 10. And choice D, 35, 15, and 15. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. And I, or other experts on the channel, will reply with the correct answer in the comments as well. Thanks for participating, and good luck testing your knowledge. Here is the question you might frequently get as part of employment assessment test. The sum of two fathers' age is 80. The sum of two sons' age is 40. The sum of the fathers' and the sons' age is 60. How old are each of three mentioned people? And you have three groups of people. Choice A, 60, 20, 10. Choice B, 55, 25, 10. Choice C, 50, 30, 10. And choice D, 55, 25, and 15. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. Let's first understand the detailed scenario. We have a multi-generation family here, and the three people mentioned are a grandfather, who is also a father. We'll call him a G for simplicity in the calculations. We also have a son who is also a father, and we have a son who is also a grandson. We'll call father an F and grandson as S. Another key consideration here is that each person is in calculations twice which means if we add up pairs of values, we will get the twice of the summary age of all people. To calculate sum of all ages twice, we add all three pairs, which is 80 plus 40 plus 60, and we get to the value of 180. To get actual age, we need to divide 180 by 2, and the calculated value is 90, which means that sum of grandfather plus father plus grandson ages is 90. Now, as we have a sum age for all three people, we can calculate individual values because we already have ages for each pair. The age of grandson is 10, which is calculated as 90 minus 80. The age of father is 30, which is calculated as 90 minus 60. And the age of grandfather is 50, which is calculated as 90 minus 40. So the correct answer is C. 50, 30, and 10. It seems like a tricky problem, but together we can solve it. So hopefully you've got an idea how to solve these types of problems on the test. If you're looking for solutions to other problems you might frequently see on the test, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description of this video. Let's look at one tricky problem you might frequently see on the test. The pitcher has three times more water than the coffee maker, while the coffee maker has 12 cups less water than the pitcher. How many cups of water are in the pitcher? You have four choices. 12, 18, 20, and 24. Do you think you know the answer? To solve this challenge, let's use formulas, and we'll have P for pitcher and C for coffee maker. So the first statement is that the pitcher has three times more water than the coffee maker would be equivalent of the formula P equals 3 multiplied by C. The statement that the coffee maker has 12 cups less water than the pitcher would be an equivalent of C equals P minus 12. Let's put both of these formulas together and convert it into the formula with only one variable. So 3 multiplied by C is an equivalent of C plus 12. So the total number of cups in the coffee maker can be calculated as 12 divided by 2 which is an equivalent of 6. Coffee maker has 6 cups of water, and the pitcher has 12 plus 6, 18 cups of water. Question for you. Do you know how to simplify it and eliminate one step in the calculations? I'll give you a hint. I calculated the value for coffee maker, which added one extra step. You can use formula to calculate the value for the pitcher. Do you know how to do it? 
Can you post your answer in the comment section of this video? I'll take a look and give you the feedback. Thanks for participating. Let's look at the simple question, which a lot of people often get wrong. The younger brother received 20 baseball cards on his birthday from his older brother. Now, both brothers have the same number of baseball cards, totaling to 100 cards. How many cards did each brother have initially? And you have four choices. Older 50, younger 50. Choice B, 55 and 45. Choice C, older brother 60, younger brother 40. And choice D, older brother 70 and younger brother 30. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct solution together. The first step to solve this challenge is to calculate how many cards both brothers have after the birthday. Since both brothers have the same number of baseball cards, totaling of 100 cards, then each brother has a half of it, which is 50, which is calculated by 100 divided by 2. So initially, the older brother had 50 plus 20, 70 cards, and the younger brother had 50 minus 20, 30 cards. So the correct choice here is D, older brother 70 cards, and younger brother 30. I hope you nailed this question and now how to solve similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might be tested on how well you do mental math in your head without the calculator. We're looking at this type of question. How many of insurance bonds are roughly British considering there are 990 million 500,000 bonds globally and only 5% were issued in England? And we have four choices. Choice A. 4,995,000, choice B, 49,550,000, choice C, 50 million, and choice D, 495,250,000. Do you think you know the correct answer? Let's see if we can nail this question together. The trick here is that we need to deal with large numbers in your head without the calculator to do the math. The closest match to 990 million is 1 billion, and 5% of 1 billion is 50 million. So only choices B, 49 million, and 50 million could be considered for the answer. Because choice A represents approximately 5% of 100 million, not 1 billion. And choice D represents 5% of much, much larger number. Now, as we eliminated choice A and D, we can reasonably conclude the choice B is the closest, because choice B much better represents 5% of the source number, 990,500,000. Let's recap. The total number of insurance bonds is 990,500,000. If we can do the math on the calculator, we can calculate that the exact number of British bonds is 49,525,000. The trick here is how you would round up the number if you do have the calculator. And the second trick is which numbers would you pick if you do this as a mental math without the calculator. Regardless, the correct choice is B, 49,550,000. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the tricky question, which involves understanding of some fundamentals and concepts of insurance. According to the policy, the insurance company pays 60% in the case of the theft and 50% in the case of the water damage. How much will a client pay to replace his cell phone worth $1,100 if it was stolen with a $50 deductible? We are presented with four different choices, $470, $550, $610, or $630. Do you think you know the answer or do you know how to calculate it? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. To calculate the insurance payment, first we need to subtract the deductible, which is $50. After subtracting 50 from 1,110, we get to the amount $1,050. Insurance company pays 60% of this amount, which is calculated by $1,050 multiplied by 0 0,6. And the amount insurance company pays is $630. The client would pay the deductible in the amount of $50, and whatever is left after the insurance payment, which is $1,050 minus $630.
and the amount client will pay is $470. So the correct answer is A, $470. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know somebody who is looking for the job and will benefit from this video, can you please share this video with them? This is going to help them to get ready for the job interview and assessment test and help them get hired for their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the job interview and assessment test. And now here's the question for you to try. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video. Here's the question. The math class had 29 enrolled students, while 34 students were enrolled into the English class. If 14 students were enrolled into both classes, how many are enrolled into only one of these classes? And you have four choices. Choice A, 15. Choice B, 20. Choice C, 35. And choice D, 63. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. And I, or other experts on the channel, will reply with the correct answer in the comments as well. Thanks for participating and good luck testing your knowledge. A lot of people asking me, how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to answer questions other people are asking. If you know the answer to the question posted in the comment section of this video, please share your answer in the comments as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the interview and assessment test. Here is the tricky question, which a lot of candidates answer incorrectly because they do not spend enough time and miss some of the important combination in the fraction. Solve x from this equation, and you have a formula where you need to calculate the value x. You also have four different choices. Please pause the video and see if you can calculate the correct answer here. And now let's go and calculate the correct answer together. The tricky part in this question is that you need to divide 3 by 1 third, which is an equivalent of 9. And a lot of people, when they do calculation, instead multiply 3 by 1 third and get to the number 1. This calculation is an equivalent of multiplying 3 by 3, which is obviously an equivalent of 9. When you proceed with adds and subtracts, you get to the number 1. So the correct choice here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question. But in case you need more questions from the real tests, make sure to check out my ebook in the description of this video. A lot of people ask me, how can I help? One of the best ways to help others on this channel is to help answer their questions. If you see questions on this channel that you know the answer to, please make sure to post your answer. This way, you will help another person to get hired. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. And now, let's look at the question which confused tons of people during the test. How many squares are in this picture? And you have choices of 16, 29, 30, and 32. Which one do you think is right? The confusion part of this question comes with the fact that squares are not only the small squares that's shown in the picture. So if you do only small squares, that the answer would be 16. But you can have this area as a square, you can have this area as a square, and large area is also a square. So once you calculate all of those, you will get to the correct answer. And the correct answer is 30, because there are 16 small squares, 9 squares which would be created using 4 small squares, 4 squares which can be created using 9 small squares, and 1 big square. So that when we come out with the answer 30. So you kind of have to know how to calculate it a little bit, but this question we see a lot as part of numerical reasoning tests and psychometric tests. So I just want to make sure that you guys are prepared. Let me give you a tip on how to plan your time during the test. As you're probably well aware, most of the assessment tests are timed. One thing you can do to increase your chances of passing the test is to calculate how much time would you have per question. For example, if you have 50 questions that you need to complete in 60 minutes, you can do a quick math in your head. By dividing 60 by 50, it will give you the answers that you need about 1.2 minutes per question, which is an equivalent of 72 seconds per question. Having this information handy will tell you how much time you need to allocate per each question. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. In addition to showing you questions and answers from the real test, I also have questions for you to answer. Most of the videos on this channel 
have practice questions for you to answer. Please make sure to post your answers in the comment section of the video. This will allow me to validate your answer and give you the grade. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. So here is the tricky question, which is frequently used as part of logical reasoning test in numerical reasoning tests. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? And you have four choices, Sunday, Monday, Friday, and Saturday. And the reason I'm laughing is because this tells me that you always should come to those types of tests after a very good night's sleep and try to schedule them in the morning. That's the best advice I can give you. Because sometimes if you come to this type of test tired, you wouldn't even understand what they're asking you to do. So do you have an idea how to answer this? Let's take a look at the answer. Again, most of the time you have to use reverse method to get to the right answer. And the reverse method tells us that four days before Monday is Thursday and day before day before Thursday is Tuesday. If tomorrow is Tuesday, today is Monday. So the correct answer is B, Monday. Hopefully you've got this one right. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment tests faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have a community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.